So bird banding is one of those tools you use to understand the biology of birds, particularly how long they live, whether they move around the landscape, and we use it here to study some of the birds that are using this re-established woodland system. So one of the keys with bird banding, the bird banding scheme runs through Canberra, through the Australian Government, so everybody gets issued bands who's a bird bander, you've got to be licensed to do that. Each band has a unique number, and the bands come in different sizes and different types of metal. Unlike the rings we put on our fingers, which are tight, the rings you put on birds are actually got some movement so they don't ir irritate the scales and they'll stay on that bird for its life. So the way in which we capture birds is to use various traps. We use mist nets. These are fine terrelene uh, netting. Um, and the idea with them is that they have pockets in them and the bird flies into the net hits the pocket and it drops into the pocket and gets tangled up and then you just come along and take the bird out um, almost the reverse way on which it flew in so from its bum first through to its head now um, some people would start with the legs and many birds should start with the legs but for some birds like honey eaters you actually leave the legs to last because when they're almost out they have a reflex action they open their claws and it makes it much easier in addition to just putting the bands on the legs, we also record the age and it's important because if you get a sample of say 20 or 30 birds, you can have an idea of how well the population is doing. But to do that, you've got to score the condition of the feathers and to sex the birds to determine if they're male or female for some species because they are monochromatic, the males and females are the same. Um, you actually can take a couple of measurements for those species where the males might be larger than the females and for honey eaters that is the case. So it's um, just in around the areas here most of this is actually about 40 year old plantation plantings which were um, planted as part of a plan to develop a city out at Monato. Um, that satellite city um, eventually was canned um, but the vegetation was in place and it's grown up um, and it's now supporting a reasonable diversity of the birds that are now disappearing from the Mount Lofty region as a whole. So things like hooded robins, restless flycatchers, Jackie winters, diamond firetails, southern white faces, and on and on, are actually using these reconstructed habitats. And that's really important to know because it tells you if we can put back the habitat and enough of it, we can arrest the declines that are currently taking place elsewhere in the arable parts, the agricultural parts of South Australia.